From those preliminary results that we've received from UCAT today, we know that the average score is going to be between 605 and 680 on the UCAT. That puts you in the middle 40%. Well done for scoring so well. That means you've scored better than thousands of other applicants. However, even with a good average UCAT score, it's important that you apply to medical schools strategically. There will be some medical schools who won't consider you unless you have a very good UCAT score. So in this video, I'm going to talk through the universities that I suggest you think about applying for with an average UCAT score. We're also going to talk about how they use the UCAT and what other factors they'll consider in your application. We're going to go through these universities just in alphabetical order, so don't read anything into the order in which I'm saying them. This is just alphabetically which one comes first. Angela Ruskin is going to be the first university that I suggest you look into applying to. The way that they use the UCAT is to rank all applicants on their UCAT score, then offer an interview to everyone achieving above a threshold. There are two thresholds every year. First of all is for any applicant from anywhere in the country. And second one, the lower cutoff, is for anyone who qualifies for a widening access to medicine scheme. There are actually additional points if you qualify for widening access and you live within Essex. For the interview process, Angela Ruskin will not look at your academics, your personal statement, your references, or the SJT. So as long as you've scored above that cutoff of the UCAT, and if you do well in your interview, those are the only two things that Angela Ruskin will look at when they're accepting medical students. However, Angela Ruskin have recently said that anyone who scores band four on the SJT section of the UCAT is likely to be eliminated. Eliminated sounds weird there. They're not going to come around and, and kill you. They are going to eliminate you from the application process. You won't be given an offer. My second suggestion for universities to think about applying for with an average UCAT score would be Aston University. Aston uses your academics and your UCAT performance to rank people for the interview selection process with academics counting for about two thirds and the UCAT supporting about one third of that. They have said that the SJT won't be used in that part of the selection process and that they won't be excluding anyone based off of their SJT score but they haven't specifically said how the SJT will be used. The key to being competitive when applying for Aston is having good GCSE results. Like with many universities, the GCSE scoring system makes up about two thirds of the point system for the interview allocation. The University of East Anglia is another great option that people should consider. The University of East Anglia doesn't have a minimum cutoff for the UCAT, but they have previously said that anyone scoring in the bottom 30% of the year is unlikely or it will be unusual for people to be given an interview if they're scoring in that bottom 30%. Unlike other universities, they don't look at your average, they look at each of the four sections individually, and they have previously said that a high score is advantageous, but a low score does not disqualify you. So if you're someone who's done really well in lots of the sections, but really badly in one, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be disqualified here. After they've used the UCAT to rank applicants and given interviews, they use a scoring system from the interview, your UCAT, and your academics to rank people for offers. They don't use the personal statement anywhere in that process, except they can discuss your personal statement with you in your interview. University number four that I'm gonna suggest in this list would be Edge Hill. Edge Hill is another one of these very new medical schools. And part of the whole reason these medical schools were set up is a need for widening access to medicine. Edge Hill has a very good widening access scheme and they have a slightly different cutoffs and different criteria for people who do and don't qualify for those widening access schemes. Check out the Edge Hill website in the description if you're thinking about applying to Edge Hill. This year will only be the third year of applications to Edge Hill, so it's really not very clear how they're gonna be using the UCAT, but previously they've used academics followed by the UCAT to rank applicants. The University of Hull York is the fifth university on this list. The University of Hull does reject anyone who's scored in band four of the SJT, and then they use the UCAT, your academics, and your SJT band to rank applicants. The UCAT here gives you about 40 marks. Your academics make up about 30 marks, and the SJT is 15 marks. So the UCAT makes up about half of the grading system that they're using to rank applicants for interview. In previous years, about 50% of the people given interviews scored less than 680. So for those of you sitting with an average grade on the UCAT, you're still in with a really good shot. University number six is Kent and Medway. This is another relatively new medical school 
who haven't had anyone graduate yet. They're only in their third or fourth year of accepting applicants. Applicants to Kent and Medway Medical School are going to have their UCAT used for a cutoff and then have a look at their academic performance. Anyone with a band four in the SJT will be rejected. The University of Leicester, which is university number seven on this list, are also a good option to think about if you have a good or an average UCAT score. The UCAT makes up about 50% of the application process, 50% of that ranking for interview. The other 50% comes from your academics, so if you're applying straight out of college, that will be your GCSE performance so far. As with many of the medical schools, unfortunately, if you've scored a band four in the SJT, you will not be considered for interview here. The really good thing about Leicester is if you check out their website below, you can have a look at exactly how they use the different academic boundaries and the UCAT cutoffs to score the applicant and you can work out exactly what score you would get in their ranking and how likely you're going to be to get an interview. It's almost like you can apply to them before you're applying to them. You can use it to screen. The University of Southampton are another university that use the UCAT quite heavily in the application process but it doesn't make up all of it. In previous years for Southampton, the person with the lowest UCAT score that was still offered an interview scored 640. Now about half of you falling in that average range will have scored above that, so you should be in with a chance of getting an interview here. Your academic performance at Southampton are only used as a screening process. So if you have relatively low GCSEs compared to some of the other medical school requirements, this could be a really good option for you as long as you've done well in the UCAT. They will not be looking at your personal statement or the SJT. Last, but by no means least on this list of universities to apply for with an average UCAT score is St George's. This is the only one in London, so if you do have your heart set on London, this would be a good one to consider with an average UCAT score. Unlike lots of other universities on this list, St George's does have a minimum cutoff for each of the sections. And in general, they say you have to have scored above 500 for each and every section. After excluding people who haven't made the cutoff, they will then rank everyone based on their average UCAT score. And in previous years, people with a UCAT score in the top 45% have had a good chance of getting an interview at St George's. Typically, George's doesn't look at the SJT section. They don't have a cutoff for the SJT either. However, the UCAT may come into play again later on in the application process if you do well enough in the interview to be put on the wait list for offers but not well enough to be given an offer straight away. Check out the links in the description to go to the websites of the various medical schools mentioned and check out their application process. If you ever have any questions, please leave a comment below or if it's university specific, it's a really good idea to drop an email to the admissions advisors. Stay tuned for the next video about the UCAT of where to apply if you have a high UCAT score. I really hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments below which medical schools you're thinking of applying to leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. The statistics from today cover everyone that's taken the exam from the start of the testing window until the 12th of September. Now that's just under 17,000 candidates. The main thing most people will be interested in is what was the total mean score for everyone so far. And as of the 12th of September 2021, the mean score was 2,570. That gives a mean average score of 642.5. What that means is if you plotted the bell curve, that middle line on the bell curve should be sitting at 642.5. Another way of thinking about that is that currently, if you got a score of exactly 642.5, then there's probably around 8,500 students who did worse than you, and around 8,500 students who did better than you. What about the individual subsections? For the verbal reasoning, this was yet again the lowest scoring section. I think this is the hardest section. I know it was my hardest section when I sat it. I know lots of you watching this will agree that it's the hardest section for you and had the lowest average score of 584. At the other end of the spectrum, the quantitative reasoning has again come out as the highest scoring round and that's 685. Abstract reasoning, which can be quite polarizing. Some candidates will never wrap their head around it. Unfairly, some candidates seem to find it easy. The average score for that was 671. And for decision making, the average score was 631. Along with the average scores, the UCAT has also released the deciles for this year. I'm not going to read through all of those. Instead, I'm just going to put them up here for you to have a read through yourself. As you can see, the top 10% of candidates this year got above 2,920. That's an average across all four sections of 730, which is really high. The bottom 10% of people were only scoring 2,230 this year, which is an average across the four subsections of just under 560. And the last bit of information that we've been told by UCAT is the SJT bands. 
Now that scored in four bands, and this year out of the 17,000 people that have sat at the UCAT so far, only 16% of people have managed to get into band one. 40% of candidates are sitting in band two, with 32% of candidates in band three, and 12% of candidates not managing to get above a band four. As I said already, these are preliminary statistics and they will change by the end of September. Now that we have those deciles, we're able to work out what a high, an average, and a low UCAT score are likely to be this year. I think the best way to break that down would say people who scored low on the UCAT are in the bottom 30%. The high would be the top 30% and the average would be in that 40% in between. Grade boundaries for that this year would be a low score is anything under 605, a high score is anything above 680, and then an average score would be anything between 605 and 680.